Uh, okay, uh, let's see. So it's, uh, hi, hello, thanks for having me. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to be in Mainz. Um, and let's see if uh, the micro how the microphone interferes with my glasses. Um, uh, so I'll tell you about some work with uh, Chaco uh, Craig uh, Fox uh, and myself, and it's sixteen eleven dot something. I forgot to copy down the thing. Um, and also some work with uh, uh, Manos Stamu, who is an excellent uh, postdoc in Chicago, uh, and Yura Zupan, who uh, needs no introduction. Um, okay, um, portals in uh, Twin Higgs. So this portals uh, is, is um, you know what portals are. They're they're and uh, Twin Higgs, meaning uh, there's this, uh, oh well, what is Twin Higgs? Twin Higgs is this uh, notion that maybe the hierarchy problem, uh, or let's, let's do it, let's start the other way. Um, where's the, oh, here it is, sorry. So it's the notion that there's the standard model that we know, and uh, there's going to be another one, so um, our standard model is going to be called A, and there's another standard model called B, um, and there's going to be a Z2 uh, that exchanges A and B everywhere, um, and um, perhaps uh, the electroweak A and electroweak B, or SU2A and SU2B, live together in uh, maybe an SU4, a global SU4, or maybe an SO8. These are, uh, um, so this lives inside that. Um, so these two electroweaks can sit together in a bigger global symmetry, so that when uh, SO8 breaks down to SO7, or SO4 breaks down to SU3, it's the same thing. There are seven goldstones. Um, six of which are eaten because um, uh, our three need to eat, and the other one also need to eat. And there's one PNGB Higgs. Um, I can't spell. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so that's 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 the idea behind Twin Higgs. So uh, there are two standard models. That's the key here. And this, in one, um, this solves two problems at the same time. The naturalness problem and the where the hell is everybody problem at the LHC. Okay, so um, um, this is what I'm going to tell you about, like the 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 setup, the motivation. Um, uh, what I want to spend more time on is the this notion of there's a standard model and another standard model, and these two. Um, can and have to, within this uh, framework, talk to one another um, through some portals. Um, and uh, what is, um, how, can, how can this uh, go? Um, okay, so I've given many talks about this story. Um, and uh, uh, often there's this question, so I'll ask it for you because uh, uh, it's I'm sort of a leading question. Uh, and it's like, really? A whole copy of the standard model? With this, like, uh, look like, yeah, really? You're crazy? Um, like an electron and a photon? 
And everything at this point, I'm like, well, yeah, a little bit apologetic. And uh, uh, yeah, m it doesn't have to be the whole damn standard model. Um, let's go here now. Um, so at this point, um, the answer is, well, it doesn't have to be. There are, in fact, there are two maybe extreme possibilities uh, to live within this uh, framework. One goes by... Uh, the mirror option, and one is the fraternal twin Higgs. So this is uh, uh, Nathaniel and Raman and uh, Andre and Matt Stressler, uh, and this is this was us. Um, so uh, so the the question is really a whole damn standard model, and the answer here is yes unapologetically. Uh, and here is, um, uh, take just the third generation uh, and uh, the W and the Z and uh, the gluon. And you don't need any all the rest for naturalness. Okay? Um, uh, two loops. For um, the same reason you need the Gluino and Susie at Tulips. Um, so, um, now the, the, there are pros and cons here. Uh, the biggest pro here is that cosmology uh, here is, uh, is a breeze. It's easy. Um, you don't have to think about it too much. There are all sorts of nice options for dark matter. Um, are there also LHC signals that are sort of awesome? Um, uh, Chaba and company uh, worked on uh, displaced uh, uh, decays of the glue balls here. Um, well, the LHC signals here are a bit more less spectacular than here, uh, but what can we do? But here, the really the the big the reason perhaps that where that people have uh, spent more time on this. Well, there was something to study here, uh, and the cosmology here is uh, well, uh, you know, it's like uh, I can't draw myself doing this. It's it's a little bit uh, worrisome. Um, so um, yeah, but 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 so this was um, sort of our attitude for a long time. Um, but, uh, so in this talk, I'll, uh, I'll just say that, well, okay, well, theoretically, wha wha so wha why should I think of this at all? From the theory point of view, this is sort of, uh, uh, let's say this is a bit weird. Um, the reason th is th that this is weird is that I need this Z2 symmetry to connect uh, these two standard models in order for this mechanism to, to work. Um, and it's a bit weird to impose a symmetry when even the spectrum of the theory uh, doesn't respect it, right? And if you think about flavor uh, here, so here there are three generations, one of them happens to be the top. Uh, how do you impose a symmetry between that particular flavor of in the standard model and just one fermion in the other sector. Just feels a bit weird. Whereas if there's a mirror symmetry, then at least there's a mirror symmetry. There's a symmetry. So this is, uh, makes me sort of uh, happier. So, so Um, it depends that there, there, there's a taxonomy there. Um, um, there's a version that has a chiral third generation, and yes, there is a neutrino there. And whether that is a problem is uh, up for discussion. Uh, there's also what's called as vector-like uh, twin Higgs, where it's uh, it's vector-like, and then there's no, n there's not even a neutrino. Uh, the product of the faces. Uh, 
Uh, I d yes, but I don't know how to take product of faces. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so in this talk, um, I'm going to double down on this column and just say, yes, let's just take another copy of the standard model and consider um, all generations, neutrinos, a photon. It can be massless if it... L let's consider that possibility. So uh, we're going to uh, think about this. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Well, not really. <laughs> um, I'll just say that it's a problem, and so the kinetic mixing with that photon will have to be smaller than something. And then the, qu the question I'll deal with for a significant amount of time is, can it really be that small? Uh, but I'm, I'm definitely worried about cosmology. That's the... Uh okay, so we have two standard models. Uh, how can they talk to one another? That is the question. Um, I actually don't need these faces anymore because I'll just distract Carlos. <laughs> He'll think about how to multiply. But I do need a table, so I'll... Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll use this table quite a bit, so I'll keep it around. Um, so how can two standard models talk to one another? Um, operator. Um, and uh, you can write down operators in all sorts of theories and in all sorts of uh, bases. I will consider, okay, uh, standard model, cross standard model. Um, let's write the theory down up here. And the Higgs-Vev, the electroweak breaking scale in standard model A is called V. In standard model B, the electroweak breaking scale is going to be called F for historical reasons. Uh, and F is going to be a tad bigger than V by a factor of a few for this story to work out nicely. And um, I'm going to write down these operators. Um, so this is an effective th field theory uh, below F, or below G times F, really. So uh, it, this contains uh, Ws and Zs in both sectors, um, fermions, uh, and our Higgs. But let's assume the other Higgs is, is, is out of the theory. It's integrated out. The reason is that uh, I picked this basis is that, is that it's um, later on I'll be talking about the composite twin Higgs. Um, so it's the composite Higgs version, UV completion of this story. And there, the, the, the other Higgs is never in the theory, right? It's, uh, this is a Carl Lagrangian. And, and so, so it's if, if the other sector is going to be uh, in the electroweak broken phase, let's, ju just for the sake of uh, uh, Z2, ma manifest Z2 symmetry, let's pick both to be in, in this phase. And it makes life a little bit easier. Okay, first portal is the Higgs portal, uh, which is just our Higgs uh, coupling uh, with a Yukawa of uh, some fermion uh, to the fermions of the other sector. Did I draw? I didn't draw the diagram. Okay. And there's a V over F here that, that comes in once you work everything out. The reason, so this must be there. This is sort of model independent within this model, right? Uh, why is that? Because I'm solving the, I'm addressing, solving, the hierarchy problem. This is top A and this is top B. The other one has been integrated out. Um, and once it has been integrated out, I generate this this uh, effective operator. Here I took just this vertex and I dressed, dressed it with one VEV. 
So the the theory has a, a this non-renormalizable uh, one over f interaction between our two of our Higgses and the top partner, and that comes out once you integrate out the heavy Higgs. So this is the uh, uh, portal. This is uh, okay. This is there. It's model independent. And um, as we'll see, it's a, it's a big headache. Um, OK, it gives me this wonderful thing, but it's a big he headache for cosmology. Um, the Yukawa is the standard model Yukawa of the appropriate Fermian flavor. So it's the top Yukawa for the top, the bottom Yukawa for the bottom, electron Yukawa for the electron. OK, uh, there's a. Um, since let's assume a mirror symmetry, so wh whatever fermion combination you have here, um, take the Yukawa, the, the element of the Yukawa in the standard model, and stick it here. Uh, so it's it's really um, so we can decorate this with flavor indices. Though I will not, uh, I'll I'll continue ignoring them. Obviously, uh, there will be, uh, well, really, it's hypercharged, but let's just uh, write down the photon. Right? This is going to be important. Um, obviously, OK, this is important for cosmology. I mean, all this, these uh, plots with uh, epsilon and M of the A prime. Um, obviously, this is phenomenologically important. Depending on the mass of the photon, which will entertain just about any mass, including massless. Um, there is the cousin of this, which is um, a Higgs decay, a mixed. Uh, which will be, let's just introduce some generic scale lambda that, that I will not uh, quantify here in this table. Um, and just like if, if these guys mix, then this operator has the same uh, quantum numbers, right? So the Higgs can decay to a photon and a dark photon. Um, the dark fo now, the, the pheno of this will depend, obviously, on what the mass of the dark photon is and what this is. Etc. But it's uh, uh, interesting to consider and hasn't been considered enough to my taste. Sorry, the, the dark photon is in, in included in your W since uh, Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, there are photons in the theory. Um, yes. Uh, okay, let's see. How many more lines do I need to leave myself? Okay, I can. Ah, three more. Ooh. Okay, it's going to be tight, but we'll we'll fit three more operators here. Uh, there there are mixed uh, dipoles. Uh, for example, um, so this will be suppressed by the mass of the fermion. Uh, so this is a dipole of our fermions under the dark photon. Uh, and I'm, uh, to save space, I'm uh, dropping all uh, denominators. Thank you. Um, there are Z couplings. So this call this the Z portal. Oh, I skipped a, well, there are obviously four fermion. For example, this may be important for cosmology when these two sectors decouple. It could be important for direct detection. Um, uh, and the Z portal. 
for example, our z in principle could couple to uh, their fermions or vice versa. Now, how is this gauge invariant? This will be gauge invariant if I introduce a uh, v squared uh, over some scale squared. And this will have an f squared over some scale squared. And uh <coughs> those of you who've worked on, uh, for example, z to bb bar um, will know that this can come from, um, if you marry this current, with uh, an h dagger d mu h. And uh, um, so this is uh, the twinny version of that. Uh, so this is a list. It's not complete. So I, I'm there. There are more options. Yes, Jing has another option that I forgot. Yes. Yes. Say that again. You you're asking about this operator? So I'm I'm uh, I'm in the yeah. So, so th there will be uh, yeah. M maybe I should if if uh, if I treated this with some respect, maybe you're right. I should put in in, in a Higgs vev here, uh, and then this would be squared. This is really a dimension six operator. Thanks. Um, good. Uh, yeah, all of these are dimension six operators with the exception of this beast and uh, call this what you like. Um, okay, so all these can can matter. The Higgs portal. Yes. Um, so now let's see um, how do we uh, deal with them. Let's see, how am I doing? Wh when did I start? 11. 11. Hmm. I have 25 more minutes. But what, uh, how do you pick which operators to include in this list? I mean, is what is the? You um. So, so these are the ones, the, the first ones that. Um, so, in the current draft, we have. I wrote some of the most notable ones are, and my collaborators are really complaining about that. So, uh, so this is an open question. Thanks. Um, uh, of course, I can start decorating these with, with uh, parity violating things like that. Um, but uh, as you see, I'm running out of uh, time and space. Um, but just, uh, just yes. I just understand the logic. So at the scale four by f, what do you allow? At the, at the cut of what do you allow? Uh, 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 and right now, I. Uh, I'm I'm allowing this. Um, I'll uh, later on. I'll have like sort of composite Higgs bonanza and and uh, SO8 resonances and and G stars and crap like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I apologize. Some of the people who wrote that model uh, <laughs> <the> <laughs> are here. Guideline yes. Guideline <laughs> what? There's no guideline. It's just the no. There's there's absolutely a guideline. I'm just um, I'm I'm just. Uh, so 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 the guideline is I'm going to uh, take now. So why don't you go ahead? Because have minutes. Yes, <laughs> this is model independent in this framework. All these are UV dependent. Everybody, and the guideline is that okay, they're UV dependent. Let me pick a UV completion and ask myself how big are these things going to be in that UV completion, and that UV completion will be uh, the composite twin Higgs that. Like most of the authors, the forefathers of this uh, model are here. So, Ofri uh, and Michael, along with uh, with Lo and Tessie, um, same day, right? So, um, yeah. So, so, um, so that's the model I'll pick. I'll just stick to that. I have my reasons to pick it. Yes. Well, um, this scale is not fixed. The relative um, Z2 imposes a relationship between the coefficient of this and the coefficient of that. 
But this can be with a coefficient of zero or a coefficient of non-zero. So, so the question is, what is the size of this epsilon, for example? Okay, it's uh, this operator by itself is E2 symmetric. There's no H here. Uh, there's, uh, there's an H here. You're saying there may be a relation between this and that. Um, um, I'm sure there's a way to... Parametrically, I st stuck this in here because they, they violate the same symmetries, but the, I, I can't promise up to order one. Um, I'm sure that, yes, so it, let's put it this way. In composite Higgs models, there's a lot of ink that's been written about th this operator. So I'm not going to go into that. Uh, the scale of lambda, um, so the UV completion will kick in at a few 5 to 10 TV. So it's 4 pi F, F is... TV, 700 GV, something like that. Uh, okay, since I don't have a lot of time, let me just, I'll just mention um, the first line here uh, and the headache that it gives us uh, and what you can do about it. And then I'll talk about all of these, uh, which are a bit less trivial. So this, uh, the Higgs portal, so this is lo known long ago. Uh, um, essentially, in the early universe, the A's and the B's uh, can exchange Higgses through this interaction because the the that's right the Higgs the A's interact with um, uh, H interacts with A's, and now I've introduced an interaction with B's. Uh, and just doing rough N sigma uh, algae, well, again, I'm, I'm rushing. Um, this N sigma V uh, will go like T to the fifth over M Higgs uh, to the fourth. And let's decorate this by whatever it needs to be decorated. So this um, drops rapidly. If I compare this to Hubble, that means that at some point this will decouple. This interaction will decouple, and uh, at some point below some temperature, these sectors will cease to talk to one another. And it turns out that the temperature of that decoupling is around 3 GV, um, which is an interesting uh, place in the universe. All sorts of um, species are, are leaving the bath, etc., etc. Excuse me. Yeah. So you you can uh, okay you can solve uh, Boltzmann equations, which is oh f. Uh, oh, this is not very sensitive, but again for the rough numbers that uh, that I just told Marcella, TV-ish for f, a little bit below TV. Uh, yes, that's the only free parameter. Um, so, uh, so that's a problem. Why? Because if the universe was ever above 3 GV, and we usually think it was, um, this whole sector is thermal. At 3 GV, it has the same temperature as ours. Um, so an, a large number of degrees of freedom um, are, are present in the universe, relativistic degrees of freedom. Um, below this temperature, um, all sorts of, so in the A sector and the B sectors, there's all sorts of decouplings. Um, uh, the charm leaves the bath. Um, well, it happens here first. And then it happens here. And then all sorts of thresholds happen. But since we impose Z2 symmetry, they're roughly the same. So that means that at the end of the day, 
the energy density in the B sector and the energy density in the A sector are going to be roughly of order 1. The ratio will be roughly of order 1. And that means uh, what we call delta N effective, which is uh, just a measure of that in funny units, is of order uh, 7, uh, which is very ruled out. Okay, so that's, that's a problem. Uh, let me just briefly... So one way to address this problem was to go fraternal, but we're not doing that here. Um, so, yes? Why are the masses... Uh, so, so there are uh, renumeration operators of HB with the fermions in the B circle, right? Are yes. The same Yukawas? So then there is a hierarchy of masses... Uh, yes, the same Yukawas. Regulated by the BEPs. Um, th that's right. The, the hierarchy is the same. The B sector is a factor of a few, few, few three to five, say, heavier. And that's it. L let's just assume that for... So the charm, that's it. Okay, very good. What? Well oh, the charm, maybe, no. Actually, actually, it turns out that w what determines this is the bottom. So, so the, the charm is actually in the process of going out as these decouple. It's, uh, yeah. Um, very good. Um, so, uh, um, so apart from going fraternal, there are currently two uh, options on the market. One uh, Chaba worked on with, tell me with whom? Sal Lombardo and? Eric Kupfer. Oh, and Eric, okay. Um, so uh, the idea is, and Marco Farina also did something similar. The idea is that, um, again, uh, at 3GV, when you decouple, um, the energy density, this ratio, is set by just the number of degrees of freedom in every sector. So if you decouple, and correct me if I'm not uh, uh, selling you correctly. Um, the, uh, but, but so if we add an another interaction, and here's a, a, a list of possibilities. Uh, Marco picked this one. Chaba picked one that's not on the board, which is the neutrino portal. Um, if you uh, lower this temperature a little bit, and make sure the uh, sector is decoupled when, at a time when we outnumber the other sector. We, our G star is much bigger than theirs. Then this problem will be uh, addressed to some degree. Okay, uh, that's one possibility. Uh, does it work? When do we? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, what, <laughs> what, what temperature? <laughs> yes, it helps. It certainly helps. Between the two uh, phase, okay, and now the, the QCD phase transition on their side is uh, if, so it, let's say the f there's a factor of five between V and F, uh, it's less than five of a window. So you need to time it right, but uh, if you just, uh, yeah, if you hold the election at the right time. <laughs> 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 okay, let's not, <laughs> shit, I shouldn't have gone there. Uh, <laughs> and I'm recorded. With profanities. Uh, okay. Um, uh, the other option is that um, really the w we have a, a time window. So let's pick uh, inverse temperature or time. Uh, if this is 3 GeV for the temperature inverse, and this is 1 MeV. So there's actually quite a bit of time here. There are six orders of magnitude in time between this and that. And you can do all sorts of things with that time. I don't have colors. How many orders of magnitude? Six in time. In time. Okay. Oh, there are some colors. Um, so what, uh, what uh, Chaco and Nate and Patty and I did is we, we introduced uh, another uh, particle, which is the right-handed neutrino for us. So let's see, uh, this is going to be our sector. Uh, this is going to be their sector. So they start roughly the same and they're red shifting. Uh, and then there's this neutrino, which is uh, ambivalent, very weakly coupled. It's the right-handed neutrino that's, a that, that's doing some, some seesaw work for us to generate neutrino masses. Um, and because it has a mass, at some point it becomes, um, so it wasn't thermal equilibrium, it has decoupled already. And at some point it becomes matter, so it redshifts. So this is a terrible drawing because all these should be sloped. 
but this is, should have a slope of four, this should have a slope of three. So this is N, this is A, and this is B. And then it turns out that because uh, the VEVs are different in the two sectors, it turns out that the weak decays of this neutrino, when it does decay, so we, I, I want it to happen before an MEV. Oh, terrible drawing. Let's, let's give, be, be kinder to ourselves. Okay. Yes. So at this point, N is going to decay and uh, give all its energy, essentially, to the A sector. Um, and this happens, I claim, naturally. Uh, so, so the point of this story is between 3 GeV, which is when the problem ends, and 1 MeV, which is where I need to start facing the, the, the data, right? Um, there's, a, there's, a w there's some time window where I can, I can do stuff in the universe and I can inject energy density into our sector and not into theirs. So this is, uh, this is out there. It's not what I wanted to mainly focus about. Um, but so, so the, the, the moral of the story is that this portal must be there, but it is, um, there, there are opportunities to, to remove the, uh, the unhappy face in cosmology. Um, This, this neutrino is, is uh, highly ambivalent about its sector uh, because essentially there's a neutrino A um, um, and a neutrino B and they're Majorana ma uh, neutrinos and so this is the Z2 symmetric mass and I can write down a small mixed mass and once I diagonalize this matrix, the mass, the mass eigenvalues are maximal admixtures. So the mass eigenvalues, the ma mass eigenstates, are maximally uh, sector ambivalent. Against its, uh, weight. Say that again. It gives up all of its energy. It gives up all its. Oh, what a terrible picture! Um, it gives up all of its energy density to uh, to well, not all. Uh, most of its energy density to uh, the A sector. Th that's the, the, the idea the that I failed to convey with this picture. Yes? What determines how much goes to A and how much goes to um, It will, uh, if I, I it'll be um, V squared over F squared will go to B in this particular uh, uh, model, just from weak decays, because their G for me is smaller than ours. Um, okay, but let me let me tell you. So this sort of gives us license to carry on and think about all the other ways that these two uh, sectors can talk to one another. Uh, this one always ends up in the back, and I never use it. It's just a fact of life, and I want that no. table over there, so I'm going to remove this. So as I said, um, these operators are UV dependent. Uh, in fact, I'm going to enlarge the table. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and I'll tell you how in a second. Um, so I, I'm going to pick a UV completion, and, and I'm going to make it my life hardest uh, by picking composite Higgs, um, both because it's it's uh, it's it's a pain to uh, to deal with and learn. Uh, where's Giuliano? Thank you for writing that review. Where, where is it? Okay, 350 pages of wisdom uh, by Panico and Vulzer. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but also, you'd think that if there's strong dynamics at 10 TeV that will involve both of these sectors. Um, all of these will be generated, suppressed by 10 TeV, and you're just 
Uh, either you give <laughs> masses to some stuff or you're screwed, right? Um, and it, the, the story turns out to be much more subtle than that. Yes? Um, not today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know I'm, I'm, no, I, I have plenty for dark matter. Um, and there, there are, there are, uh, so twin baryons, twin atoms, twin taus. I, c I don't know if there's a twin electron paper, but I could imagine one. Uh, the twin photon could be dark matter. So, so there's plenty of uh, opportunity. But twin nuclei, yes. But this is not going to change the story here. I mean um, no, it's, it's, it's not. Um, yeah, I, I'm I, it may, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not there yet. Um, yeah. Uh, so before I dive into UV completion, let's make some observations about these operators uh, because they violate some symmetries. So let's define some symmetries. Let's define charge conjugation. Charge conjugation needs no introduction. It's just charge conjugation. But uh, let's define charge conjugation A, which would be that any A field goes to its charge conjugate, and any B field does not. Now you know what uh, happens next. There is charge conjugation B, under which A fields don't go and, oh, and the B fields get charge conjugated. Now charge conjugation is violated in this, the theory is chiral, charge conjugation and parity are violated, but CP is a respectable symmetry. So in addition, let's define C, CPA to be CA times parity. And parity, um, there was, as I, I would have liked to have uh, space-time inverted just for one sector and not the other in the same universe. And, and uh, sometimes it's fun to think about. Um, let's not do that. Um, so parity is just parity. OK. So these are the definitions. And so now we can uh, talk about these operators and how they transform under these various symmetries. So this is um, just CP even. Uh, everywhere. Uh, however, this guy, uh, well, parity, it's, it's parity even, so parity doesn't matter. Uh, and it gets a minus sign for the A charge conjugation and the minus sign for the B charge conjugation. But it's CP um, plus. N so notice this times that is not necessarily that, because there is a parity difference between them. But in this table, it, it will be because, because I picked a basis where it's, it's either axial or vector-like. Well, everything is vector-like in this table. This inherits the same thing. Uh, let's see. Um, let's do a line here for reference. Uh, this guy is, so this, let's declare this to be a magnetic dipole moment. Uh, so this is a plus. Times parity, yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah, CP is just CP. Um, uh, so this is positive. Again, there's just one photon dangling here. So this gets a minus here and a minus there. And uh, I'll do this quickly. Everybody, all of these UV dependent portals, at least the ones I wrote down, um, have this property. They are, they violate the CP of their own sector of, of, of both sectors separately, but conserve CP of the other sector. I could have decorated these with gamma fives and epsilons. And then um, uh, basically everything would have reversed sign. Um, 
But let's think about these because uh, the other ones are still a headache. Uh, but I believe the results for these will apply to those other ones, but even stronger. Okay, so, so, so here's, the, here's the deal. You, in order to generate any one of these operators, I need to uh, violate CP A and B uh, separately. So, so, um, so what, um, so now, now I, now I'm picking a UV completion and I'm probably in bad shape with time. <laughs> One minute. Ooh, okay. What? <sighs> the Loret, uh, here I just picked vector. Um, uh, if I add two gamma fives, nothing happens. If I add one gamma five, these signs get reversed, I believe. Let's talk later. I have one minute. Uh, um, in this, so, so I, picked, I picked this theory uh, below the electroweak scale for both series. So it's a vector-like theory. Um, it, it, I could have written, written this down in the chiral basis. And then very weird things would have happened. For example, um, yeah, this operator, um, this would have been a chiral operator. So it has good transformation properties under the ACP. But, it, but uh, if, if you're at an A fermion, CPB is just parity. And you're, you violate parity maximally. So this would be re replaced with an X, where X means um, I'm uh, bad symmetry, okay? Bad symmetry, okay? So I, I made life easy to myself and picked this basis as well. This was the ulterior motive. Um, now that my spurions, that I will not have time to write down, um, will have this, this property because they will come from a, a, a chiral uh, theory. So they will, uh, I will be writing Yarskog like invariants and uh, they will have, uh, the, the, the there will be a Yarskog in the A sector that will have a minus sign in the A sector, but an X in the B sector. Um, but still, I, I, can, uh, I can use these spreons and, and these symmetries to, to constrain these operators. Okay, so very, just, I'll, I'll just tell you what the result is without um, telling you any of the details of them all. So, um, just to say that, so y you'd think that this would be just maximally violated. And the first obstacle would be the SO8 dynamics. So what is the composite twin Higgs? It's uh, an SO8 gauged, strongly coupled SO8 sector that um, of, of composites that mix through partial compositeness with uh, fundamental fermions and fundamental gauge bosons. So it mixes, so this is a cartoon of it. I'm sorry, I'm not going to write any equations. So there are these two standard models that both mix into this strongly coupled sector. Uh, and you'd think that since, for example, the Higgs lives in a, an 8 of SO8, um, there's no way in which uh, y you will not generate uh, interaction between them. Symmetries will not be preserved separately. They'll be broken together to a diagonal or something like that. It turns out that uh, for SO8, that is not true. So, um, so even in if, um, so let's uh, focus, the SO8 is, uh, uh, well, it contains SO4A and SO4B. So SO4 is the usual electroweak cross-custodial where our electroweak cross-custodial lives and our their electroweak cross-custodial uh, live. And it turns out that um, charge conjugation is a, an element, charge conjugation A is an element of this uh, symmetry. Uh, so this is known for composite Higgs. It's also true here. I forget which appendix of, of Giuliano's uh, wonderful paper this is in. Um, so, um, should, do I have time to demonstrate this? 
10 minutes, okay. So because I'm you don't believe me, okay? So I, ne I need to show this to you. So um, le let me just remind you one embedding. It's not the, com it's the quist quickest embedding of SU2 into SO4 for, for this purpose. Uh, let's just take a Higgs uh, field, even though I'm, I'm not, I've, I've just for this explanation, I'm divorcing myself from this basis, just to explain this point. Uh, what, what is, um, how do I uh, put SU2 cross SU2 into SO4? If I have a, a Higgs doublet, it has two elements, a one and a two. It's a complex doublet, and I just take the real part, imaginary part, real part, imaginary part, and if I act on this as a real vector now, this is SO4. Okay, this is one way to represent SO4, which is SU2 cross SU2. Now, what is charge conjugation? Charge conjugation roughly takes Higgs to its star, right? Which means I need to take every imaginary piece to minus itself. Uh, so I didn't leave myself enough room, so standard model B needs to go. Uh, and you see that this matrix will do that. It takes all imaginary um, parts of this field to minus itself, so it star effectively stars uh, this Higgs field. So this is, in this embedding, this is charge conjugation A. Um, and the same goes for B. Uh, and since uh, the Higgs gets uh, a VEV in, in, in some basis that is real, this, is this, uh, this element is also not broken by the VEV of the Higgs. So what does this mean? It means that um, uh, when you, you, you look at this model, open any of the wonderful papers that, that uh, uh, um, uh, my friends here wrote, uh, and you find all sorts of crazy representations under electroweak. For example, the down quark, for some uh, annoying reason, needs to live in the 28 representation of SO8, right? Um, uh, so, and that has uh, fields that are charged under our electroweak and their electroweak. And you think to yourself, well, if I take an, a 28 and put, calculate just kinetic mixing at one loop, I'll get it. And then you do that. Uh, Manus does that very quickly. <laughs> and, um, and you find zero. And you're frustrated and you start drawing other diagrams. And it turns out that um, the model is smarter than you initially, but you catch up to it. <laughs> and uh, this symmetry is, uh, is going on, which means there's, uh, s there are subtle cancellations uh, and this, this vanishes. So what this means at the end of the day is that SO8 by itself will not generate any of these uh, operators. Um, the next obstacle, there are two more obstacles to, sur to overcome. I'll just tell you what they are. Uh, first of all, uh, color. So um, we have SU3 color. Twin sector has SU3 color. It is tempting, and for example, Free and Michael did do that, to embed SU3 cro to cross SU3 into SU6. In fact, they, they, they picked SU7 for some perverse reason, but, uh, I, I'll, uh, but, but that contains SU6. So if you, if you unify the two colors, it turns out that that is an obstacle to imposing these symmetries. Uh, the reason is that, the quickest reason is that uh, once you have an SU6 color, there are gluons that live here. Um, and uh, it turns out that uh, they violate uh, these symmetries. So you have a diagram, this wonderful flower diagram. So this is an off-diagonal gluon that lives in uh, SU6, uh, and you generate kinetic mixing, for example. But I didn't have to do that. I could instead just gauge uh, SU3 cross SU3 cross Z2. Um, uh, and Matt and Andrea, I think, were a bit more... Uh, they didn't commit to any of that, if I recall correctly.
Oh, I, I'm just using kinetic mixing. Um, so, so obviously, I have a lot of work for the next three minutes, which is to calculate all of these. Um, I'm, uh, this is the simplest to think about because it's a flavor invariant. Um, and this is more complicated, but they share the same quantum numbers in terms of CP. So, yeah, huh? okay, is a current. Yeah. It's a current, yes. Yes. And currents flip psi on sign under charge conjugation. Well, under P they are not well defined, but because gamma mu has uh, one time like in Sure, but I'm contracting it with another current. No, I, I understand yeah. that, that in terms of the C the, the, the square is CP bar. But if I just look at this, I don't understand how this could be forbidden by a twenty eight or whatever symmetry. I can always write it with a column and square it. And I will have the part A column a column of what? In what space? Well, you're you're welcome to um, <laughs> to start. Uh, well, no, the the bilinear by itself, vi it's not a singlet. It it uh, it violates CP. Well, it has a gamma mu, it needs to couple to a mu or to another current. But this by itself, it just doesn't have a well-defined property to under CP. I'm not sure I understand you at all. A vector, but a vector under gamma mu under P is not well-defined, right? Right, but this is a symmetry. Uh, I will always score it. So I cannot say that... No, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not attempting to generate the current. I'm trying to generate this for fermion interaction. It has these symmetry properties. I need spurions to I think that the to match this. The minus is it's neither minus nor plus, right? mm, I disagree. Yeah, no, no, but there's another <laughs> uh, squared. Yes. It's it's minus one to the mu all squared. We agree on that. I agree that the square is in front. I'm just saying That's all I wrote. I'm, I, I didn't say anything was obvious. Okay. Okay. Um, I still claim it's true. Um, l I, I propose we continue after I'm done. Great. Um, so y you see where this is going. CP violation is key. Um, I claim. Uh, I stand firm. And, um, and uh, CP is violated in the standard model. Okay, our CP is, is, is uh, as far as we know, our CP is CPA. It's also CP. Um, so, uh, the, so this will be generated at some level, unless I impose CP on the other side. Um, so um, I won't tell you about it, but uh, one can start counting phases and writing Yarskog invariants. Um, at the end of the day, um, um, w once you've reached that point, the, the, re the result is not entirely surprising. The Yarskog invariant in the standard model is small because uh, masses are nearly uh, degenerate. Turns out that this uh, uh, model has uh, more phases than the standard model does. So, so there are there are again there are there are opportunities to uh, violate CP in a very big way uh, in the uh, strong sector. But there are also I mean and 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 Andy has written. Uh, papers and, and Chaba about strong sectors that have flavor symmetries for other reasons for KK bar mixing. So those models, for example, um, will automatically have small CP violation uh, in the UV. So at the end of the day, the, the non-trivial song and dance uh, uh, is that uh, all these operators you'd think in composite Higgs have to be large. And the answer is they can be large, certainly, but they also can be small. Um, so th there's no, the twin, the twin mechanism has no impediment for these uh, to be small necessarily, structurally. 
Um, I owe Joachim a, a, a word about cosmology, which is that this thing, just what I'm aiming for, uh, epsilon needs to be less than 10 to the minus uh, 10 for cosmology not to come back and uh, uh, so to, to prevent the B sector from getting thermalized again at an MeV. Uh, so this recouples uh, later. Uh, but I think I'm, uh, I'm done. <laughs>